so what OCD do you have now? Uh, well, when I was a kid, it was mostly like I had figurines and they had to be a certain way. And if somebody touched them, I would snap. Like, what Whoa. were the figurines of? I had like, you know, Star Wars and okay. stuff like that. And then uh, now it's I have to do a certain amount of push ups every morning. And if I don't, I, I, I'm like doing push ups in a bathroom and like How a many? bar. I'm up to 80 straight. Well, um, it's funny because that sounds like like a like a workout plan. Yeah, well, it, it, I've kind of channeled my OCD into something that can actually is good for me. Yeah, instead that's, of like, I've never. That's the most efficient. That's like, it's like uh, well, turning the stove on and off doesn't help me. So it's I'm like, like this wind help power me. or something. Yes. It's like using your <laughs> yes, exactly. It's like using your OCD for good. Right, right. Eighty in a row. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been years of just doing them. So yeah. I'm like, oh, today I'll try to go to seventy two, and I'll go to seventy three, and now so I'm at 80. today you did eighty. Eighty, yeah, diamond. Diamond push-ups, ladies and gentlemen. Is that the only one you have right now? No, I got it. Well, now I've added a few more. Of course, you got to. Go ahead. Because the mornings are easy for a comedian because you wake up, you kind of have nothing to do. So now I, I'm like, who do you think you are? You're like, what OCD habit should I take on? Go so now ahead. I picked up a few in the afternoon where I do, I have to do 30 pull-ups on a, on a scaffolding. Fuck, that's funny. I did them earlier before you, you got 30 there. 30 pull-ups on a scaffolding. I'll literally leave the cellar. I'll do a set, go out, find a scaffolding that no one can see me, do 30 pull-ups and go back to the cellar and be like, ah, oh, boy, I got some, boy, I got a good slice of pizza. Do you have to go to like city hall and see who's doing construction? <laughs> 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 Zip code, Google searches. Yeah, for con- yeah, I have an for, app. For, for contracts. <laughs> um, so what's funny is your hands are going to be filthy at that. Oh yeah, that. I go wash them. That's not a problem. Nah, I can handle that. Um, I mean, look at these like OCD. Yeah. Um, these are pull up calluses. 30 pull ups. Are they diamond? Pull- like, what are you? <laughs> they're this way, but they're okay. they're pretty ugly. I'm like, you know, I'm still, this is a newer OCD thing I've how put old, on myself. How old's new? Six months. Okay. And, but you can do 30 in a row. A shaky 30. I'm going to pitch a show called American OCD Ninja Warrior. <laughs> I'd like you to come on. Ninja. Um. Okay. So, 30 pull ups. 80 push-ups. What else? Uh, I got to do squats as well. Are you just not trying to get in shape? <laughs> <laughs> this just sounds like a guy who decided on the new year to get in shape. Well, I think a lot of guys that go to the gym, they have a plan. I'm doing this in the morning or else I can't Their function. Their world falls apart. Yeah, exactly. Okay. How many? What's your squat? Well, this is where it gets weird. Oh, so I do, I do 30 kind of easy ones and then i do 20 where i really have to straighten my legs go all the way down straighten my legs and then weights I, or no weights no weights and okay. then i do 20 where i jump and do them okay so do you open with the 20 jumpers or no you... i close with the 20 jumpers because it's harder yeah after the first set yeah and you don't know no no easy buckets for you yeah um, you got that right okay so again Pretty good. Could be as worse. As far as OCD goes. Could be worse. But I think that's why I drink so much because I'm like, I got to take a break. I got to like cut, take the edge off. Do you have any more OCDs to go over? I'm sure there's several more. I'm sure there's more. I mean, look at this. You know, like, I don't need, I could just, oh, fuck. you know, write these in my phone, but I like the paper and I like knowing that they're all with me. So yeah. there's all kinds of weird shit. I, I, you know, I don't need to cuff my pant, but I cuff them. Uh, I only have one pair of jeans. I have ticks where I have to make noises. Now, now we're getting a little too I personal. Love this. Fuck, I love it. I do duck noises and then I have to whistle a certain way. Where? At the house. When? Randomly, but I got to get a couple in a day. Can you give it? <laughs> when do you do? I do it when I'm uncomfortable. You know, so I think comedians have a higher cringe meter like uh, uh, we feel cringe faster than other people mm-hmm. and so i think anything like you walking into a room is a normal thing but you feel weird doing it there's a cringe meter going right. i think it's the same with me uh you know you drop something and you're like oh i feel stupid so you make a duck noise oh, it's so great what's the other one i do a whistle i go <laughs> and i just do that it's kind of like hey I'm, I'm in the room i exist when she comes in or when you're already there or uh, when when you walk when into i a walk room. in and do you remember when it started? Oh, kid, just real young, real young. Because my parents were always like, they worked so hard that when they came home, they're like, leave us alone. And I think I felt invisible. So I was like, I got either I got to have a great line to get a laugh or else make a noise or something. Oh, it's fucking great. 
you're like the first openly famous OCD person. Don't shake hands. Don't like well, the, you. You were the one that I was like, oh, all right, that makes sense. But I never really, really I sense. didn't really know much about it. So either did I, and I was I didn't. And but I would, and you must have just thought you were losing your mind, or you. No, I'll tell you what I thought. I was uh, uh, not. I have, unlike uh, previous guests that you've talked to, and maybe even yourself, I have the most supportive, wonderful, loving family, mm -hmm. which made it even harder because I was um, independently miserable, mm. and you know, just in your body, minute to minute, the most common. Uh, emotion is fear of everything. Of, your, that's your general state is fear. Yeah. Fear, anxiety, um, worry. Um, and, and, and all I do, I feel like I, I, I'm, I'm constantly just, just grasping at just trying to, uh, survive, you know, on from, and I remember that from, you know, I don't remember feeling any other way ever feeling any other way age three four five every everything my, my mom tells a, a story about me um even crawling when i was crawling before i could walk um and i i i have no memory of this so i don't know but if somebody was in the room like you are right now with their legs crossed i would go crazy and they had to uncross their legs. I would I would crawl up and just start screaming. And then she learned that if they uncrossed their legs, I would stop screaming. I cannot tell you for the life of me why that bothered me, but I must have had some sort of I realize now with obsessive compulsive disorder, you know, you have these reoccurring thoughts. You know, it it always gets me. And I, I talk, I've talked about this ad nauseum, but you know, the term OCD has become a vernacular. Uh -huh. You know, and people will go, I'm always, a, I'm yeah, a little yeah. OCD. -ish. So I, OCD. Yes. Yeah. I, I love everything clean. I want everything yeah. in order. Yeah. I'm like you, you yeah. know, and I don't like germs either. Yeah. Like, uh, tell me who likes germs and who doesn't yeah. want a neat place. That's not what OCD is. OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. If you are obsessing about, I think no matter how unencumbered you are in life with whatever, you will have ridiculous thoughts. It's just our brain what and and the average person that thought will go in and then wash away. You know? And even yeah. if that thought is and this is I'm going to bring it back to my story, even if my thought is, "Oh, look, his legs are crossed." You know, anybody who looks at it. Yeah. The fact is with OCD, you get stuck on a thought and you can't you can't move on from that thought. So what happens if I was to articulate out loud OCD, everybody go, oh, look, his legs are crossed. Oh, look, his legs are crossed. 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 And I'm going, you know, even as a baby and I can't articulate it, his legs are crossed. His legs are crossed. And I can't say, uncross your legs. His legs are crossed. His legs are crossed. His legs are. So I have the same thought as anybody else, but it fucking stops you. It just stops you. It's hard to. It's and, truly upset, like obsess, obsess, obsess. The word obsess. obsess yeah. That's it, what you should. That's what. And then. Yeah. Another overly used word. I'm obsessed with. But what? obsession is real. If you're yeah. literally yeah. obsessed, you can't move on. And it is fucked me up to knowing. I can't tell you how much of a battle it it is. And to be my age and from my generation you know, uh, number one, I couldn't articulate what was going on in my mind. Well, cause uh, you're, you're the thing I like, you're, how old are you? I'll be 68 this year. Yeah. So, but you're, you're not from like a, uh, therapized generation. No, and no. So, and even the word mental, cause mental health is what we're talking about. Yeah. The word mental from my generation is it, even that word. Was physical an doesn't mean anything. Mental. Yes. means mental, mental, mental. You're mental. You're it was like, away. You're me this guy is mental. It was a Martin Short had that, uh, right. am I mental? It's making me mental. Ed Grimley. So it wasn't anything that even personally I can 
tell somebody like my mom going, I don't know why I can't, I can't think because your legs are crossed. I can't think. I mean, I, I wish that I could slow down and articulate to go, I, you know, there's something wrong because I'm in the middle of the living room. I'm just crawling here. You've crossed your legs. I know that doesn't mean, and that juxtaposition of having the wherewithal to know that it doesn't really mean anything mm -hmm. and it won't do anything to me and it won't fuck me up and then still not being able to get it out of your head even makes it worse. It's the dichotomy between what you're stuck on and knowing, like even, listen, I'm, I have some intelligence. I know that the chances of me- Some, some, go ahead. Some is all relative, but, uh, but if I shook somebody's hands, truthfully, I mean, the chances of me dying are, minimal. Uh, but I have such a fear of triggering myself. That's why I don't shake hands. Ah, I don't want to trigger because there have been times and it, my thought is not unlike anybody Another else. Another overused word, trigger, in the new sort of TikTok, Instagram, mental right. health. Oh, that's triggering. Yes, that's, uh -huh. ooh, that's triggering. When someone has a real trigger, like if I shake your hand, all hell's going to break loose. And that is what people don't understand. See, what, what they don't understand is 99.9% .9 of the time, if you shook my hand right now, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. But the knowing where it has taken me, like, and nobody, listen, you could shake somebody's hand and we are in a business where we're probably a coming shake, in. A lot of handshaking. Yep. Meet and greets, you know, or, or just, you come in contact with more people than the average person. Yeah. Just because you're in show business and you're in a public business, you feel something clammy. You're not going to like that clamminess. No. Nobody's going to like that clamminess. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, that's clammy. The same thing. Oh, that's clammy, but it's yeah. clammy. It's clammy. It's clammy. And it's like screaming. It's clammy. I want to go wash my hands. Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to wash my hands. I got to wash my hands. And then I go in there and I wash my hands and then I don't want to touch the side. And then I realize, you know what? I don't know if I, that, that maybe I should have done it hotter. And I don't know if I, you know, I sang happy birthday twice. And, and then, and then I, I walk away and I go, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. It was clammy. It was clammy. Let me just wash my hands one more time again. And I'll be sure. And it was clammy. Let me wash my hands one more time. And I could be in this fucking loop. So for the clammy hours. loop, as, as we'll call it, the yeah. clammy loop. Yeah. So you wash, you're in, you're still in the bathroom and you go, oh, but it was clammy when you, so you're thinking about the sensation of it. You're thinking about the sensation or you're like projecting it forward into this, whatever horror could come from clammy surfaces. There's projections of uh, this clamminess is uh, an illness, is a virus, is I'm going to get sick. I know that I'm going to touch my face at some point. Mm -hmm. You know, I keep my hands away from my eyes and my nose and my mouth always incessantly. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's fucking noisy and it's so noisy and it's deafening that is I can't there a, move on. Yeah, was there a rock bottom? Meaning like yeah. the worst, the worst one where you were like this, I gotta do change this. I have to do something about this. It wasn't me. It was my wife. So we were going on a trip. The limo picked us up at, at the house, the family. We were going to catch a plane and one of the kids crossed their legs <laughs> in the car. Like, not like they, and, I can't and believe their they shoe. didn't know. I can't believe they didn't know by a certain no. age. So you don't do that. And their shoe touched my pants. The underside of the shoe touched my pants. And I went, turn the car around, turn the car. We were almost at the airport. We we're going to miss the flight. She goes, what's wrong? I go, I got to change my pants. I got to change my pants. Why? Because so-and-so shoe touched my pants. Because I'm not turning the car around. I go, you better turn the, turn the fucking car around. I'm not getting on the plane with these pants. I'm not going to get on the plane with these pants. Turn the car around. And at this point, this is, I was in my 40s. We were probably married for 20 years at the time. She said, Howie, if you don't get help, I'm out. I'm out. That's it. Taking the kids and I'm out. You're making it hell. Like, and even up until that point, you know, everybody's very was very accepting of my, for lack of a better term, my quirkiness. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just quirky. You know, and I was in terror. I was depressed. I was anxious. It must I was have always been fighting so something. lonely. It it is, and there's nothing lonelier, and there's nothing more torturous than 
sitting with your own thoughts without anybody weighing in on But they're web- not even useful. I would sitting with I sit with my own thoughts. Single, not married, no kid, but I'm sitting with my own thoughts. This is not they're not even your thoughts. But I own them. You know what I mean? They, 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 they what you're talking about, they are my thoughts. And I my mean, thoughts are You know what I mean? Like, like uh, yeah, but I, they, don't they feel in some ways just like put on you? Clammy, you know. Here's what I feel. I feel like they are my thoughts. And I don't feel that I have any different thoughts than you or anybody listening to this or watching this mm-hmm. right now has. What I do have is I have a skipping record. You know, if you put a record on and it's skipping, Mm -hmm. it's a, I have a malfunction, a genetic biological malfunction that won't let the, the thoughts go through. I mean, I'm not a neuroscientist, but I do know that, you know, there's a constant flow of input going into all of us. You are making the decision, you are filing your entire environment, you are filing yeah, and you are making decisions in the moment of this is what I'm going to act on. This is what I knew, need to do in this moment to counteract this or to enhance this. You know, they're all thoughts. You see food put in front of you. You make a decision that you're going to pick up your utensils. You're going to cut the food and you're going to eat it. You know, as somebody touches you with a clammy hand, you go, oh, that's clammy. That's a, you, you, yeah, for okay. a moment yeah. you're taking. No, yeah. I, when I guess that, the skipping isn't yours. The, that's it. So it's a mal, it feels like a, a malfunctioning machine. And I'm much more articulate today as I listen to myself describe it to you than I was at the time, because I had no understanding of what this was. I never heard anybody else talk about it. I didn't know what the term OCD was. I've never heard that term. Um, So when you just live in this noisy, fucked up, skipping, ridiculous thought, and they could be intrusive thoughts, even like it's a ritual. If I'm gonna leave the room, I gotta turn counterclockwise before I leave the room. I don't know fucking why. I don't know why. It's just a silly fucking thought that went in, you know, I, and even today, like I have numbers that I have to, when I'm on the treadmill, I go and run on the treadmill. I I find that very uh, relaxing. But at the same time, I have to always see 207. I don't know why. 207. I have to see 207, like two minutes and seven seconds, 12 minutes and seven, the calories. It's just 207. I like to see 207. And then if I miss it, I don't feel good. And I know, I'm telling you intellectually, I know that's fucked up. That's stupid. It's like, so the turn counterclockwise, see 207, and then it becomes a superstition. That superstition is a nice, is a nice term. I wish <laughs> I was you, just superstitious. You. No, but, but I'm no, not, I, we're, we're right. But it, but it is, it is. So that's how you can articulate it to somebody who doesn't know what you're talking about. You know how you have ridiculous superstitions? I got to put a feather in my pocket before I go. Mm -hmm. What if you had to put a feather in your pocket before you go and you couldn't find a feather and you have to put a feather in the pocket before you go and you have to put a feather in your pocket before you go and you have to put a fucking feather in your pocket and you can't find a feather. And if I don't put a feather in my pocket, it's not going to work out. And if I don't find a fucking feather now, I'm going to die. And if I don't find a feather, the world just stops with the fucking feather. So when you're healthy, it's a superstition. When you have OCD, it's a- You get hijacked, it sounds like. The best term is your term. It's a fucking block. It really is a block. It stops life. It stops. You can't have a little bit of OCD. When you are suffering, when you are triggered, when OCD happens in that moment, I mean, I always have it, but in this particular second, I'm not suffering from it. But when it is triggered and when it does happen, there is no better way to describe it than I'm blocked. I don't know if you were the first person I ever heard talk about intrusive thoughts, Mm. but it was heartening to me because I have thoughts where I'm like, I'm never going to do that. Yes. Yeah. And I don't, and I feel bad that I had the thought. Right. And it's repetitive. Yeah. And I think a lot of comics, I mean, that's a really beautiful thing about comedy um, in general is that people will say things that you thinking that nobody wants to say that they've been thinking. Um, But yeah, some things that are even more uh, like taboo um, where 
yeah, it's really shameful. Um, I'm trying to think there's there's different kinds of OCD. Pedophile OCD, where people are afraid that they're a pedophile. Um, a lot of women who are postpartum depression, where one of the symptoms of postpartum OCD is fear that you're going to harm your own child. Right. And so they don't want to touch their own baby. I mean, it's like really can destroy people. Yeah. They're so freaked out about this and really convinced that they're somehow a dangerous person. Well, it makes you feel like you're shitty in a deep, profound way. Yes. Yeah. And you have this impulse and it's like, well, why would you have the impulse if you weren't shitty? Yeah. Or think of it again. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. And that's the OCD part where it's like most people, they would think some creepy thought, you know, whatever it is. And uh, they just go, oh, oh, Jesus. You know, like. <laughs> right. And, but I know when I started thinking my thoughts first as a kid, it was like whatever was taboo in society, that's what I zeroed in on. So I was afraid that I was like a basically like a lesbian serial killer and that I was going to kill my family and chop up my my mom and my sister's breasts and then put them into chunks and bits and have sex with the chunks and bits, put the chunks and bits on a cob salad, toss it and feed it to the baby Jesus. I'm just spitballing. That's from the album. Anyways, but, whoa. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did never get that far into the anxiety about it. That was did actually- you, Lesbian serial killer, did you shave your eyebrows? I guess that's the question. No, is that part of it? I feel like Elaine Warren. She was, was she a lesbian? Or Scarlett, or what's her name? Shaved her. Yeah. Playing that's right. Monster. You could win an Oscar. Monster. Whatever. Anyhow. Any hoogs. Well. And so you must have thought, I'm, I, well, I'm a lesbian serial killer. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what's happening. So I got to stay up all night. And that my, my response to this to prevent it from happening was to sit on my hands and to shut my eyes all night to make sure that I didn't do such a thing, which is, ex that's a great preventative measure if you are ever worried that you're associated. But not sleep. It sounds like sleep. <laughs> it's not sleep. Not sleep. No, did not sleep. Um, and then I actually, part of developing the eating disorder was to kind of knock myself out. Uh, so I'd stop thinking these thoughts, like just feel like, oh my God, I'm going to have 17 bowls of ice cream so that I don't have to think about this stuff anymore. But You feel so sick that you're like, all right, well, this is just, this is my priority now. Yeah. That I don't know. Pa yeah. I'll pass out or yeah. I'll, it keeps, it keeps you busy eating disorders, keeps you off the pipe. Off well, the, the way you, <laughs> uh, it, the way you're like, the way I developed my eating disorder, like it was a band. Right. Right. You get a new eating disorder. <laughs> what you do, you get yourself, I mean, I, I all I had was a bunch of pickles. I had a bunch of pickles. I poured some sugar in it. And my I said, process? Hey. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I gotta get to pra I gotta get to band practice in the bathroom. <laughs> hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe, and then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.